Are you sick of cereal that just can't hold up to a little milk, soggy flakes, soaked wheat, or flaccid bran? Well, it's time to wake up to the taste of crunchity, crunchy crunchers! Crunchity, crunchy crunchers are always ready to stand up against skim, 1%, 2%, or even whole milk. Crunchity, crunchy crunchers are rock hard with iron, yet will not rust in your bowl. This cereal sure is crunchy, even with milk. We guarantee that our crunchy, crunchy crunchers is so crunchy that we will personally send our dentist, Dr. Samuel Chompers, to your house to fix any broken or chipped teeth. I am a dentist, and I play one on TV, too. And I can repair your teeth for just nine box tops of crunchy, crunchy cruncher cereal. And look, you get a free spool of dental floss inside every box, too. I nearly swallowed it! For just three extra box tops, we will give you a full dental exam. Come on, open wide. Don't be afraid. Now look, this one can eat a few more bowls of cereal. There's still a few more molars back there. Take your stinking paws out of my mouth, you damn dirty dentist! Crunchy Crunchy Crunchers is a proud affiliate of Chow Time Dog Food, and our dentist is also a veterinarian. Crunchy Crunchy Crunchers! Hello, this is Jack Palance. I've been making movies since the 1950s. And most people remember me from either doing one-armed push-ups on the Academy Awards show or from Ripley's, believe it or not, television show. Well, I've decided to start my own television show. Jack Palance's Believe It or Else. If you don't believe it now, you'll be forced to believe it later. For example, my daughter, Holly Palance, didn't think we would get back on television. And now, unfortunately for her, she's scrubbing floors in Kalamazoo with a toothbrush. Believe it or else. <laughs> There's nothing unusual with marriages nowadays, especially with those light-in-the-shoe types, if you know what I mean. But did you know that Mr. John Beano of Massachusetts is the first man to marry a robot wife? Do you, Johnny Beano, take this robot as your lawfully wedded wife? I do. Do you, A463000, take John Beano as your lawfully wedded husband? I. 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 Oh. I do. Johnny, you may take her switch and turn it on and install her software. Here is a screwdriver. They are now oh. happily married, proud parents of a toaster and a blender. Believe it, or else. <laughs> Our next story involves an unusual bookworm, Susan Slime Trail, a librarian from Slugville, New York. She has read every book about worms ever created, and yet she won't even get near a single earthworm. On page 165 of the Book of Worms, it describes the unique digestive habits of the three-headed hydra worm. I was on the set of a John Ford Western once and had nothing to eat except a can full of worms. And I tell you, it was no 
spaghetti dinner. Ew! You're disgusting! Believe it or else. Now, go back to your books, nerdy girl. We don't want you anymore. Our next story is a doozy. Our next story is a doozy. Here at Believe It or Else, we discovered a family that has no knees. Actually, my husband and I have no knees. They used to call me Frankenstein when I was a child because I have no knees and I walk a little differently. Besides, I have no lap to sit in though. For some reason, our children can only walk on their stubby half legs. They have no knees either. Mom and Dad can't afford stilts. I can't run very fast, but I can walk on my hands. Go, go. You think this family beats the monsters in weirdness? Wait till you see our next family. Believe it or else. Believe it or else. If you think that last family beats the monsters in weirdness, wait till you see our next family. This group of misfits have their faces pushed in. Believe it or else. How'd you like it if your face was pushed in? lives. <laughs> Sometimes I like having a face that's pushed in. Having a face pushed in is very distinguished. Oh, quite. My face has always been pushed in. You people are freaks. If you had had your faces punched in because you're in a boxing ring, you'd have an excuse. But you don't. So this has been a real thrill. Or leave it or else. <laughs>
And will poor Laura Petrie move to Minneapolis and throw her hat in the air? We'll see you next week on The Rob Petrie Show. Hey, why should he get all the credit? Me and my wife, Cucumbers, should have a spin-off show. <laughs> hey! Hey, you know, according to the commercial, each one of these robo tussin cough syrups has someone's name on it. It's true, Amy, but each bottle also has each person's own symptom on it, uh, like a cough or a sneeze or a nasal disorder. Yeah, but I came across this bottle, and it just doesn't belong on the shelf. Well, uh, is the seal broken? Is the bottle expired? What's wrong with it? Well, let's just let the bottle talk for itself. Hey, manager guy, guess how much alcohol is in my bottle? There's enough in here to, uh, for two bottles of whiskey. <laughs> hey, now that just isn't right. Wait, wait just a minute. There's more. Hey, manager guy, did you know if you boil me down and add just a little bit of soap over there, some of the hand soap, you get some really decent crystal meth, man. We better get rid of this one right away. Oh, jeez, I hope the other bottles aren't like this one. What are you going to do, man? Arrest me? <laughs> I'll take care of this. Oh, give me 911. Give me the operator. You know who we got to call, don't you? We got a report of a dope dealer giving out the 411 and making drugs for cold and flu sufferers out of regular cough syrup. Has the world gone mad? I used to think that vapor rub had a place in the criminal world. But now, cough syrup? What the heck? We better get the SWAT team involved on this. SWAT? Isn't that like a television series from like the 1970s? Hmm, maybe you're right. We better get the DA involved instead. The Drug Enforcement Agency? <laughs> no! The Donuts! Edible Association! I'm good for at least a half a dozen chocolate cream. Okay, Mr. Robotussin, we've got you surrounded. What are you gonna do, shoot me? There's only two of you cops out there. <laughs> no, we're gonna drain you out. Well, let, good luck with that, because hey, dude, you know what? If you pour me in your coffee, and you eating a bunch of donuts, you lose weight. It's just like taking a Fedrin, man. <laughs> um, maybe we should um, put them back on a shelf. Okay, well, we got pancake breakfast back at the station, and I'll tell you, I could set you up with some Mrs. Butterworth. And I'm still hungry. Okay. Mrs. Butterworth? That fatty. Hiya, kids. I'm Poison Man. As spokesperson for all things poisonous, I challenge you to find any other celebrity-endorsed products whose skeleton is on as many packages as me. Paul Newman? Yes, good actor. But none of his stuff is poisonous. And Jemima? No, you'll find my face on many more products than Aunt Jemima. Many more things are poisonous and harmful to your health. Mrs. Butterworth? No, no, Mrs. Butterworth is only on waffles and syrup. And none of those things are poisonous. You can eat them. How about the Quaker Oats guy? Did you miss breakfast today? That guy may look as strange as I do, but you know what? None of that oatmeal stuff is poisonous. None! <laughs> only I can put my face on any sort of poisonous product. Look, here's my picture. It's not just for Halloween, you ninnies. Even bum oil has my picture on the back. What about George Foreman? Damn, I always wanted to get that grill endorsement. So if you want to know what not to eat, drink, sniff, or touch, look for my picture. Poison Man. 
over there for sewing my head back on. Really don't, appreciate it. Don't forget that Sheriff Watson and Goober were the ones that found your head in the trash can in the first place, Clem. Hey, look at it. It's a little crooked there. Let me straighten it out for you. Oh, ah, it's yeah, better. it's a lot better, Mary. Better than that has ever going to look. Oh, yeah, I'd like to catch the French fry and sling blade that chopped my head off on the chopping block. Well, I'm sure that Sheriff Watson is on the case, Clem. Oh, and by the way, Thanks. Maribel Lou, since you're so good with that sewing kit, can you take that sewing kit and mend my broken heart with it? What? What did you say? There you go again! I wouldn't sew up your old head with a needle in a chair or a broken chair or a stump. Because ever since I sewed Clem's head back on, I took a shot for him. Well, I hate to disappoint you, Mary Bellou, but uh, I already got myself a wife and a girlfriend on top of that. Well, any relation with Mary Bellou always ends up like a soap opera anyway. Oh, yes. Except for one exception. She don't even know what soap is. <laughs> oh, by the way, here comes your mistress now, Clem, Miss Suzanne. Hi, Mary Ooh, Bellou. Hey. hey, I hear you've been trying to shake up with my man. Well, I done suit his head on. You! Girl fight! Girl fight! Let me get Clem and Cletus! Both Clem and Cletus? Yes! Why? How dumb do you think I am? Anyway, Cletus, you and Suzanne do this, so I'll be somehow hooked up with you! Hey, Cletus, I still get my, my crate full of liquor and cigarettes, don't I? Doggone it! No matter what I do, I just can't get in the good graces of Maribel Lou. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't we all go down to the gas station and have ourselves some possum stew all and right. some crawdads. I'm buying. All Sounds right. good to me. At least Cletus always comes through. Hey, Susanna, hey, there's a new man down pumping gas at the gas station. Oh, Mary Bellu, that's the same old grease monkey that worked in the ten years. He took a shower, is all. Why, that shower had done him just like a new man. Oh. Well, Mary Bellu, if I take a shower, can I be your new man? Cletus, you could be scrapping about us, Santa, and you ain't gonna ever be my kind of new man. Well, I surely will try, you dumb old country girl. Let's <laughs> try, Cletus. Oh, oh, you wanna throw some insults around? Well, I can get you out there. You whip us on nut cheek, goofball, Cletus. You want to ask me on a carry on the gas station? Go. This is a pantyhose, you whip us all. Hi there, I'm Wendell Macho from WDJJ in LA, and this show is called I Like Wearing Glasses. This week on our show, we have Elton John, Liza Minnelli, and I'm a nerd who just wrote a book about worms. I just love wearing these glasses. They make me feel so good. You know, it's funny, but you don't even look like Elton John, and you really don't look like Liza Minnelli. What gives? Do you want to see our driver's licenses? This is Elton John, and I am Liza Manelli. And you, you're not even from Los Angeles. You're from Lake Avenue in Rochester. Well, at least we got one thing in common. Well, what might that be, Miss I'm a nerd? Yeah, we are. <laughs> wow, you're right. I'm so excited, I'm starting to get an ice cream headache. Well, anyway, Elton, can, tell me, can you at least play the piano? Oh, I wish I could, but I only make a little 
bit over minimum wage, working at Lensmakers, making those nice glasses. Lensmakers, yes, a fine sponsor of our program. Liza, can you at least sing a few bars of cabaret? I can't sing a lick. But these are the same glasses that the real Liza wears. Oh, can I touch that pony? I hate to cause an argument, but the real Liza doesn't wear glasses. Tell me about your nerdy little frames, Miss I'm a Nerd. Well, I do like my glasses, but I'm really here to talk about my book on now listen, Missy, we're here to talk about glasses. We're not here to talk about worms or contact lenses or oh, LASIK surgery. I had LASIK eye surgery, and I still wear glasses to make me look fashionable. Unlike you people whose glasses make you look like a bunch of nerds. Yeah! Hold the phone, ladies! Hold the phone, hold the phone! And Somebody I even get me the lens cleaner book. solution! Stop the fighting! You're getting Elton John over here all fogged up! <clears throat> hey, hey, Wendell. Do we get paid for being on the show? I heard that lens makers is paying a big bunch of lettuce to have us all here. Well, it was going to turn into an infomercial about glasses, but maybe I should dump my sponsor and get contact lenses. What do you think, Liza? Well, maybe if we all switched glasses. Well, let's try that, see what happens. I can't see a damn thing here. What's going on? Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, I can barely see the notes I have here. I, I feel like I could sing Rocket Man with these eyes. That's amazing. Well, our time is up. Next week, we'll feature Jack Nicholson, Tom Cruise with sunglasses, and a blind dog named Drew Barrymore here on I Like Wearing Glasses. Dear consumers, I am the CEO of Bum Oil, and lately we have literally taken it on the chin as far as Bum Oil sales are concerned. We've had to lay off some of our employees, outsource some of our manufacturing, and think of new product lines. As president of Bum Oil, I told our CEO over here and our research and development staff to come up with another kind of bum oil that will shoot us right to the top of the janitorial food chain. As head chief of staff of bum oil, I went forward with permission granted by our CEO and our president to create new and improved bum oil with beard musk. Now let's make sure that our customers know that bum oil is still derived from the hard working sweat of bums just trying to climb up that corporate ladder again and is still washed with the rainwater to give its furniture an unmistakable shine. Only this time we added the unmistakable scent of beard musk. This should really attract buyers, especially those who go for the scent of a full-grown beard. We have exclusive video, I'm telling you this right now, exclusive video of two women shoppers actually fighting over a bottle of new improved bum oil. Roll the tape. Wow, new and improved bum oil. It smells, uh, it smells, <laughs> it smells great. Hey, I saw that last bottle first. Give that to me or I'm gonna call the store manager. Come on, give me that bottle. I gotta have that bottle. Oh. Don't you just enjoy the new bum oil with the scent of beard musk? It smells a lot better than that lemon spray or that lemon furniture pouch that we're all used to. 
Thanks, it's furniture polish and not air freshener. People who use the new and improved bum oil keep me from begging on the streets. I'll take a case then. I got a whole case in the back for both of you, so you don't have to even fight over it. And remember, I, I'm not the CEO, I just work in the store here. Hooray for bum oil! That bum stuck! <laughs>Hi, y'all. Cletus here. And Clem here. Well, now, just the other day, me and Clem were talking about all them rich, big-shot Hollywood tops that make millions of dollars from the box office on movies that usually stink to high heaven. Right, Cletus. Them Hollywood movies really stink. Just the other day, I took Suzanne out to one of them there independent movies, and the popcorn cost more than the freaking tickets. Oh, really? What movie did you go see, Clem? I, I think it was one of them there uh, uh, Jennifer Lopez movies. You know, Jiggly, Giggly, something like that. You know, Jennifer Lopez certainly is Jiggly. I got to agree with that. But at least you got Suzanne to go to a movie theater with you. Now, me, I can't even get Maribel Lou to watch a DVD with me. But tell me, did you get any kissing and hugging from <laughs> Suzanne? Oh, sorry, Cletus. Uh, them sex scenes only belong in the movies that stink. Well, let's tell the folks about the new movie we done got ready here. Uh, we's filming a new movie with your video camera, and it's, it's all about our friend there, Bucky. Bucky Phelps. Bucky Phelps. Our local legend, Bucky Phelps. But sometimes I tell you, all you think about is food and sex. Well, I think that this movie we done filmed with your video camera is good enough to win us an award. You know, like one of them there little naked statues. I always wanted to put one of them there on my There you go panel. again, Cletus. Food and sex. That's all you think about every time you watch a movie. Well, we got the local legend on film, and he's going to be in a highfalutin shoot up movie. Yep. Now, here's a new scene. Here are some scenes from our new movie, Run, Bucky, Run. We even got a pot in it for Sheriff Watson. Oh boy, but I think we should do a little favor for the, the people out there, you know, watching our movie. And we're gonna do the theme song. Thank you, Suzanne, okay. you're so sweet. Oh. We're gonna do the theme song. Now, now I just learned this song, so uh, can you get the lyrics, the lyrics out so okay. I can figure out what the hell I'm doing here? I think I think we got the lyrics over there. All right, let's see if we can get the lyrics. There we go, there we go. Yeah. I knew they was there somewhere. Now, these are like award-winning lyrics. Oh, so. yeah, we can get a win a Grammy yep. and an Academy Award for this like movie. like Glenn Campbell here. Can you read that there, Clem? Run, Bucky, run, run for your life. Better hide your gun, you better hide your wife. Sheriff Watson is on your trail. You know he ain't no Barney Fife. Well, run, Bucky, run. Run, Bucky, run. Let's roll it. Run, Bucky, run. Brother Bucky, I knows where you can hide. Why don't you get behind that tree? Go, go. I don't think those bullets can get through it. Hey, Suzanne. Oh, hi, I tell you what, me and Deputy Cletus here, we've been using hound dogs, greyhounds, poodles, meerkat dogs, whatever it takes to find the scent of that Bucky Phelps. We can't get it anywhere. I tell you, we've searched every outhouse, doghouse, skyscraper, building, outbuilding, in building, every house in town. We can't find a guy. Where is that barman, Suzanne? Well, you know, Buck is a family man. He, he didn't. He didn't mean to shoot Deputy Cletus. Uh, he didn't mean to escape from jail neither. But hey, I heard you left that door open. Well, you know, we might have left the door open. Uh, that might have been our fault. But he sure done shot at me on purpose. I know that. Almost got me right in the buttocks. Come on, Sheriff. I got a hunch that I picked up from watching one of them there CSI shows that might have to help us catch that fella. All right, I guess these get going now. All right, I hope, Cletus, that your CSI hunch you stole from Law & Order works out for us. I'll tell you that. Bucky, this got going now. Bucky, I need you to go in the basement and escape, and escape through the window. Clem, I mean, I mean, Bucky. Okay, Susan. Run, Bucky, run!
Well, now tell me, Sheriff, are you going to get the big guns or the hand grenades or the dynamite from the back of that there truck? No, I'm going to use a nine iron, eh, Cletus, and I'm going to pretend that I disguise myself as a golfer and I'm going to catch buggy out of links. Well, I hear that's a mighty fine golf course down there on the Pennsylvania border. Four. Damn, right in the woods. I can never hit that. Five. Oh, another one. I just can't believe I'm that bad. What the heck? Well, I'll be a pig rolling in oats and mud. Look what you done got, Sheriff. Ha! <laughs> I think Cletus, we can get the reward money there from Captain Lloyd for getting this bomber there. What do you think? I think we should get that money. What do you I think? I think so, too. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> I love it. I surrender. Here's my gun. Oh, thanks a lot there. I ain't got no cuffs, though. I wouldn't have planned on catching on the golf course, to be honest with you. I was just trying to catch up with my game a little bit. That's all, but I... You know, you can just stand like that. Yeah, I was like, hold, like, yeah, why don't you hold a club and then you can be it. that's it. Hold it tighter, closer together with those hands, like you're handcuffed so I don't look like a goofball when the police come and Captain Laura comes in with my, my money. We got to, you know what though, Cletus? Mm. I'll tell you what we got to do. What we got to do. We got to split that money at 6733. Why 6733, Because Chef? I never shoot under 70. <laughs> well, boys, here you go. Here's the prize. Hey, hold this club there, you criminal. Oh, look, look at, at all that money. Yeah. Yeah. Look at all them green bags. Just like yeah. on the poker tour. They give you the money like this. Wow. <laughs> you count it up. Six for me, three for you. And one for, I don't know. Give one, give one to Bucky. All right. Give something with the money. He needs that money for prison. That's right. <laughs> I can use it for bail. Well, Captain Laurie, <laughs> now that I got all these green bags, you want to go out with me? Ooh. Well, let's just say... No. Dang! Even in the movies, I have the worst luck. Give me that club there, Cl Clem, or Bucky, Bucky, whatever the hell your name is. Hi, this is John Monroe of Entertainment USA. We're investigating behind the scenes work of a movie that's being produced, one of the largest over-budgeted movies about an ex-president of ours. I'm talking about Taft, William Howard Taft, our 27th president. And I'm Amy Gadfly from Entertainment USA. Who would have imagined there'd be so much hoopla about a script about President Taft? I mean, there's been a lot more buzz about this movie than scripts about Washington or Lincoln. Huh, well. All I could say is that uh, it's being, uh, the star of the show is uh, an old time favorite, Colin Collingwood. Colin, in the 1970s, was a famous, famous actor. He was in a movie called Beach Baby Babes. And all the actresses in that movie, they all thought they were dating Colin, and they loved him. Then he had a brief stint uh, with nothing going on in the 80s, then the 90s, and he caught another break with a cable made for TV movie called Murder and the reflected mirror in 2001. I think this is Colin's dressing room right here. Let's go in and see if we can get an interview. Colin Collingwood, this is John Monroe and Amy Gadfly from Entertainment USA. Can we come in? No, no, please go away. Oh, come on, Colin. It'll just be a couple minutes. Oh, all right, make it quick. I hardly turn my head to see you guys. Hi, Colin. How you doing? What the hell happened to you? <laughs> oh. Oh, I gotta tell you, my agent told me about this really hot Taft script, and so I decided to bulk up, you know, like Robert De Niro did when he did Raging Ball. Uh -huh. And, uh... Didn't anyone ever bother to tell you that Taft wasn't really all that huge? Jeez. Well, I thought he was one of those guys that were in the Guinness Book of World Records for, uh, they had to bury him in a piano case or something like that. Wasn't he uh, really big at one time? I didn't know. Have you started filming yet? Do you have that, uh, holes or gain weight now? The public needs to know! I don't know. Well, they wanted Orson Welles to do this movie years ago, but there just wasn't any actors large enough to fill the role. Oh, pass me another donor. Oh, I'll just eat this one. You're not finished with that one yet. What the heck's the oh, matter with you? Oh, man. Oh, wait, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. This just came in. Received this news from your agent. Oh, my they agent? decided to apparently shop the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 
Where's that crummy manager of mine? I'll sue the daylights out of him. I gained all this weight for nothing. I gained all this weight. I can't get me women. I've been ridden. My career is ruined. Oh, man. Oh, this is so unfair. <laughs> We better leave. Apparently, the movie Tab will be shelf like Orson Welles' Don Quixote movie script. I heard that Isaac Hayes was working on the soundtrack, you know? It was like, that mean cat Taft is one big mother. Well, shut your mouth. I'm only singing about Taft. <laughs> nice joke, huh? <laughs> what is this, John Monroe? And Amy Gadfly Say, from Entertainment USA. Stars, eh? You forgot about that line. Turn off the camera. <laughs>